James, thank you so much for joining us here at the PLSA Investment Conference. Fascinating insights about what's happened in America. How do you think that is going to impact the economy in America and therefore you know, have an impact for investors here in the UK? Well, obviously there's an incredible amount of uncertainty associated with a president who uh, has challenged most orthodox notions of the Western world. But economically, uh, America has been chugging along for many years now, and I expect it to continue to. And frankly, in the short term, uh, since uh, the administration is likely to take the irresponsible uh, approach of spending more money, taxing less, uh, that may be good for the economy in the short term. In the long term, I think under President Trump, the debt will balloon. Something is going to happen at some point, and of course, this industry invests long term. Right. Well, you know, the American debt is, is high as it is now. Uh, the Republican Party used to care about debt. They used to care about deficits. They don't seem to anymore. Uh, and with a president uh, who's uh, going to lower corporate taxes, lower other middle class taxes, uh, and I expect him to probably get that through, um, the debt's going to just get bigger. At what point that hits, hard to know. For an industry like this, trying to prepare in this environment is so difficult. What strategies do you think we can put in place to try and understand the future? Well, the United States and China are the two biggest players economically, politically, and militarily in the world. Um, and Asia has been the, the, the growing uh, region for many, many years now. Um, and I don't see any uh, reason why the United States and China can't manage their relationship enough for that pattern to continue. So as dangerous as Trump is, as worrisome as Trump is, I think the, the easiest, smartest, safest approach is to assume that things are going to continue much as they have been with a little bit more uncertainty. So a few bumps in the road, but think long term. Well, I mean, I'm hoping that bumps in the road under Donald Trump don't become, uh, you know, deep, deep crevices. But uh, that's possible, and that's why there's always going to be some uncertainty. But in terms of the overall relative strength of regions and the overall relative strength of the United States and China, I don't see any big changes. So despite this sort of uprising of populist sort of feelings we've seen around the world, do you think actually the world's going to be the same place in 10 years in that sense? Well, right. I, I don't think the uh, populist uprising, I'm not a, a, a pessimist. It's easy in my field to be a pessimist, but I'm not. I believe that there have been some troubling populist nationalist trends that this neo-nationalism is worrying and, and should be rebutted. But I don't think that it will end up being decisive for our world because I think it will inspire the those who uh, have Western liberal values to realize the stake they have in our world and, and respond to this uh, irresponsible nationalism. So good news for those who are investing long term. Right. Only we just don't know how long long term is. So stick with the courage of your convictions, if you like. Yes. So when the audience listens to your presentation today, what do you hope they take away from it, if you like, and, and talk about after they've listened to you speak? Well, I certainly hope that people realize there are big risks to our world, that, that the political system has gone off track, but that it can't be fixed if pe average people, if whether they're business people or, or uh, working in other fields or whether they're working from home, whatever they're doing, they have to realize they have a stake in this system. And if they don't, uh, there's very little those of us who, who make these points can do. You talked about the young coming out to vote, for example. Well, look, in America, yes, I, I think if younger people had voted in any of the last three or four elections in the United States, the outcomes uh, would be noticeably different in the case of Obama being president. I don't think if there are young people really came out, you know, we're still only talking about half at most coming out to vote. Well, imagine if the other half came out to vote. What a, a, a better country and a better system we'd have. James, you talked about overreach and underreach in your presentation, the impact that has. What do you mean by that? And what is the knock-on effect for everybody? I think the idea of America playing a leading role in the world, but doing it with fellow democratic 
friends and allies, with the countries of Europe primarily, France, Germany, the UK, if America is leading and working with those countries and, and, and in agreement with those countries, uh, I believe the world works a lot better. So when America doesn't uh, play a leading role, when it stays focused on its own problems, uh, I don't think the other countries have the wherewithal to play the decisive role that I think the world requires. Similarly, if the United States gets too comfortable playing a leading role and ignores its friends and allies, then the lead, leading steps they take can be quite dangerous, like the war in Iraq. So to get it right, to neither overreach nor underreach, to just reach, uh, is the goal for me. And something you described in terms of underreach, for example, the knock-on effect can be if you don't get involved somewhere like Syria, for example, something like the refugee crisis happens, and that has a huge knock-on effect on, on everybody around the world in terms of move, movement of people. Well, right. Uh, too often the system, both in the UK and the United States, reacts in, to extremes. Uh, clearly, the United States and the Great Britain made a mistake in deciding to go to war with Iraq when they did and, and handling that war because it's still going on 12 years, 13 years later. So that was a terrible mistake and there's no way to go around, get around that. But that doesn't mean that every single thing associated with the Iraq war should be blackened. For example, people now think, oh, we don't, the intelligence community never knows what's going on because they got WMD wrong. No, I don't believe that. They got WMD wrong, yes, but that doesn't mean that they're uh, destined to fail. That the United States shouldn't uh, act in the Middle East because we got Iraq wrong. No, we should take each country, each problem, case by case. In other words, don't overlearn the lessons of Iraq. Learn them, but don't overlearn them. James, thank you so much for your thoughts. Fascinating, and thank you for joining us.